Today we're going to learn about a very interesting recreational drug called 2CB. It goes by pink cocaine and all sorts of other names. This will basically be the first of many videos on what are called designer drugs. So let's learn about it. Let's learn about how it works and what it does. So what is 2CB? Well, this is a psychedelic recreational drug. It is a designer drug. Designer drugs are substances that are synthesized to mimic illegal substances while themselves being legal. Chemically, they are similar, but not quite the same, which is why they can escape the legality. 2CB stands for 2,5-dimethoxy-4-bromophenolethamine. It's a very long name. Let's briefly talk about why it's called 2CB. So this structure, this compound belongs to the 2C family. 2C, and when you say X, think about like X in mathematics, how it stands for anything. This is the case here. So we have this amine, and between that and the structure right here, we have two carbons one here and one here. So we have 2C, and then here's where we get the X, that variable, B, and this is a bromine, so 2CB. It's a very shortened name for this very long name. It is supposed to be an MDMA substitute. As I mentioned before, it's a designer drug, so it's not quite the same, but it's similar enough. The dose range is 12 to 24 milligrams. It, the 2C family was synthesized by this genius named Alexander Shulkin. He synthesized the 2C family along with a whole bunch of other drugs. He's really responsible for the resurgence of MDMA in the 70s, and he's pretty much credited to be the guy that introduced MDMA into the medical field through psychiatrists and psychologists. And today it's being used as a treatment for PTSD and all sorts of other things. 2CB closely resembles mescaline, which is peyote, which is a naturally occurring psychedelic. 2CB is present in pills, capsules, it can be snorted, not really suggested because of the side effects, and it produces euphoria, laughter, visual and auditory hallucinations, enhanced sexual arousal, energy, nausea, and a whole bunch of other things. As I've mentioned before in my other videos, and I'll probably keep mentioning this as I talk about recreational drugs, is pure versus cut. Most likely, if you get 2CB on the street, it's probably not pure. There's probably other stuff in there. These days, you don't know what's in there and you're kind of taking a risk. As I always say, live your life, do what you do, but be aware that these designer drugs are often cut with all sorts of stuff and therefore should be taken with caution. Let's briefly discuss the 2C family. So I've mentioned this before in other videos, drugs come in families, just like you have a family. And oftentimes the family unit can give you an idea of the individual family members. So the parent structure is this one right here. Now what we're gonna look at is these two pieces, these R groups. Think of them as variables. You can attach pretty much anything onto these things. It's important to know that each, we'll call them puzzle pieces, each one of these variables, when you attach them in different spots, they produce different hallucinogenic effects, which is very interesting. I think there's hundreds of these things. Let's talk about a few. 2CP, six to 10 milligrams of the dose. By the way, this guy that synthesized all these drugs tried each one, I think individually, noted the right dosing and the time of the high. I don't know how he did it, but he did it, which is why we get these numbers. This one lasts about 10 to 16 hours. And the differences are this structure here. We have 2CI, I because of this iodine. I think that's 14 to 22 milligrams, six to 10 hours in duration. We have 2CG5, and that refers to this little structure here. 10 to 16 milligrams, 32 to 48 hours in duration. This lasts a long time. Then we have 2CO. This is what's called a mescaline isomer. It's very similar to mescaline, but it's not quite the same. So I just borrowed this mescaline structure from the other slide. As you can see, we have this group separated by one hill or carbon. And then you have these two. On mescaline, there is no separation between these three. So the only difference between 2CO and mescaline is that this piece is separated from these other two. So that's what we mean by an isomer. It's very close 
but not the same. And I mentioned this can be taken orally or snorted. The effects of 2CB, just like any drug, are dosage dependent and substituent dependent. When I say substituent, I mean those puzzle pieces. The issue with 2CB, especially any recreational drug, is that you do not know how much you're getting. If it's made by some random person, you're not gonna get these specific calculations. So again, that's another risk you're taking. It is a hallucinogen and it's a stimulant, very similar to MDMA. These hallucinations can include waves, things being wavy, things glowing, a watercolor-like effect, synesthesia, which is when you hear color or see sound, euphoria, giggles, happiness, tactile sensations, again, similar to MDMA. On a full stomach, it takes about two hours. Orally, it takes about 45 minutes. I'm assuming when it's not a full stomach. And nasally, I don't wanna say it's instant, but it's very quick. So I usually talk about how these drugs work, but the mechanism of action of 2CB and some of the 2C compounds is not fully understood. So I'm not gonna go into how they actually work. So the adverse reaction profile of the 2C compounds is very interesting. There's hundreds of them. So they all affect the body in different ways. There's only been a few deaths. It seems like, at least from the research I did, 2CT7 seemed to be the most quote unquote lethal one. And this one has a puzzle piece with the sulfur structure. So let's do a case study that I found um, in a research study. So 20 year old male died. He snorted from what they determined 35 milligrams. And I think it was 2CT7. Symptoms included vomiting, hallucinations, violence and aggression, nasal bleeding, pulmonary edema, fluid in the lungs, cardio, pulmonary arrest, heart and lungs stop working. The general reactions of the 2C compounds can include something called excited delirium, hyperactivity, violence, aggression, hyperthermia, too high of a body temperature, opposite of hypothermia, nausea, vomiting, agitation, tachycardia, hypertension, respiratory depression, seizures, and the list goes on. And these are all present in different amounts. But I also wanna mention again, this is a complex profile because it's not just one substance, it's a whole bunch of them. When you change around these puzzle pieces, it changes around the effects and it also changes around the adverse effects. Although these compounds don't seem to be incredibly lethal, and these side effects don't seem to be incredibly common, I think the bigger question is, are you getting pure 2CB? These designer drugs, while it's so interesting that these chemists manage to avoid creating illegal substances, you're taking a risk because you don't really know what's in it. Especially nowadays with fentanyl being put in almost everything and drugs being cut with all sorts of crazy stuff, you're probably not getting the real true 2CB. And you might be getting another thing, 2CT7 or 2CP. You don't really know. Someone could tell you, hey, it's 2CB because it looks pink. I think the pink is some kind of additive, but it might be something random, 2CF or whatever. There's hundreds of these things. So let's go back and review what we learned today. So we talked about how 2CB is a psychedelic recreational designer drug. We spoke about why it's 2CB, why it's named that. It's an MDMA substitute synthesized by this guy named Alexander Shulgin. It comes in pills, capsules, powders. It produces all sorts of different effects. And we mentioned pure versus cut 2CB. We then talked about the family that 2CB is a part of the 2C family, having a parent structure with these variables that we can consider puzzle pieces. You can attach all sorts of things to it, producing different effects. 2CB being one of the many family members. We talked about how the effects are dosage dependent. It's also dependent on these puzzle pieces being connected to the parent structure. It's a hallucinogen, causes synesthesia, euphoria, happiness, tactile sensations. There's different effects depending on whether you've eaten or not, at least the onset. And it's not fully understood at least how they work. We then closed out with a little case study on someone who died from 2CT7 the symptoms that he experienced, and we went over the general reactions like hyperactivity, agitation, seizures. And while it doesn't seem like this family is incredibly lethal, the big question I mentioned is, are you getting pure 2CB? 
like I said before, you could be getting 2CT7 or some other random 2C family member. They all have very similar effects, but are also a little bit different. So that's all I got. I hope you guys learned a lot. I always enjoy making videos on recreational or prescription drugs. So if anyone has suggestions, I'd love to cover it. My channel is here for us to learn. And I think it's important to know what these drugs are and what they do. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, and I'll be back soon with another video.